<laughs> Psalm 83. Victory in Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Psalm 83. Do not keep silent, O God. And do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. You think God's talking about this right now? Amen. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. And consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have come, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. He's talking about this country and Israel. When God talks about Israel, he talks about U.S. too. That the name of United States or Israel may be remembered no more. You got to remember right now there's a fight to dismantle United States. So that it becomes a global one world order under Satan's kingdom. That's what the battle is over. That's why for the last eight years over the Obama night organization, it's been an anti-Christ organization. Very corrupt. Unfortunately, there's too many believers that are still blinded to that right now. It's incredible because they've been taken captive in their minds under mind control by demonic spirits. And they have believed the lie. Hallelujah. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent, they form a confederacy against you. The tents of Adam and the Ish Ishmaelites, Moab and Hagrites and Gibel, Ammon and Amalek and Philistia with its inhabitants of Tyra. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. And I want you to understand that every one of these nations or tribes or heritages, whatever, lineages, they all go back to the Nephilim race. Every one of them. Verse 9. And the Nephilim race still exists this day. It's called the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party. They're called globalists, one world order, the elites. The wealthy, extremely wealthy. I'm not talking about a couple billion bucks. They own the banks. They own everything. They're under Satan's rule. They have sold their souls to the devil to become wealthy and famous. You know how many movie actors and musicians and rock and stars and rappers have sold their soul to the devil to become famous? Think about that. How many... Souls are going to hell unless they're rescued. Verse 9. He said, deal with them as with Median, as with Caesarea, as with Jabon, as at the brook of Keshan, who perish at Adon, who became as a refuge on the earth. Make their nobles like Orab and like Zeb. Yes, all of their princes like Zeba and Zumala who said, let us take for ourselves the pastures of God for possession. Can you imagine that? See, they know the things about the kingdom of God. They know about the battle, but they're going to still try to take possession because the ruler of this earth is Satan. And because they serve the ruler of this earth, Satan, he blesses them with things of materialism as long as they commit wicked deeds. Corruption, destruction, so forth. Murder. 
child molestations. As long as they do these things, they maintain a certain position. In fact, they called it the $30 million club it starts off with. And then it goes up and up and up. The more bloodshed they promote, the more they go up. Verse 13. Oh my God, make them like the whirling dust, like the chaff before the wind. As the fire burns the woods, and as the flame sets the mountains on fire, so pursue them with your tempest, and frighten them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be put to shame and perish, that they may know that you, whose name alone is the Lord, are the Most High over all the earth. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. And this is what is happening right now, starting with this election. Amen. This is what's happening. Now, what he's talking about right here is powerful because what he's setting up as a result, he's saying, look at Lord, this is what's going on. And we want your will and your kingdom to be manifested on the earth so that your destiny can be fulfilled here. In other words, there's a result of destiny. And we're going to be talking about destiny. But tonight there's something specific called fulfilling your destiny. Fulfilling your destiny. But there's something vitally important before you can even fulfill your destiny. In John 14... Everyone has been predestined, which also means destiny. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 14, verse 1, let's speak it. Let not your heart, let not your heart, your heart, your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you follow God, believe also in me, Jesus says. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Is that part of destiny? Yes. Yes. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to the Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. So I want you to grab hold of something. He expresses something very important here. He says, look, man, you got to protect, you got to make sure that your heart is right. That's the first thing he talks about. He said, don't let your heart be shaken, basically. Just believe, just follow, just trust. I'm preparing your future, your destiny. I'm preparing this for you. He, but he says something very important. He says, listen, I want you to know that your destiny is vital by your relationship with the Father. Has everybody got this? Your destiny is vital by your relationship with the Father. He said, I am the way to freedom. I am the truth for you to be free. That you may access the life of freedom. So we see here, he talks about the three chambers of the tabernacle again. It, you will always find that things are connected to the tabernacle. The outer court, of course, is the way. The holy place is the truth. And the most holy place is the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? So the third chamber is life. It is new life that is connected to the life giver. 
in this chamber, in the third chamber, is where new life exists. The first chamber is invitation. The second chamber is power. To what? Access the third chamber where there's life. <coughs> is everybody okay? John chapter 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. First chamber is invitation, the second chamber is power, the third chamber is life. In verse 10. John chapter 1, verse 10. Now Jesus, he says, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right or the opportunity to become children of God, to those who follow in his name. Amen? Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And verse 14. And the word became flesh and, de and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Those accepted Jesus as the Son of God, as Messiah and Savior, were accepted into his kingdom. They were born of the Spirit and begotten children or offsprings of God Almighty. Just like Jesus was the begotten of the Father. There's something vitally important because he said, when Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Amen? See, you and I were begotten by the price of Jesus. Jesus was begotten by the Father. But Jesus was the Father in the physical. And he begotten me and you. So without true relationship with the Father, you can never fulfill your destiny. We'll talk more about that. In 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, which is a hope is always associated with future or destiny, to a living destiny, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith, through your connection, for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time or the last days. You and I have been begotten. He's begotten us to a living hope, which means destiny. We are kept by the anointing of Christ through faith, through your connection to the Father, to the Father. In 1 John chapter 5.
When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's not only a baptism of power, but it's a baptism to connect you to the Father that you may enter the third chamber and live as a father, son, father, daughter. First John chapter 5 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. Remember the word believe means to what? Follow. Follow. Amen? Let's speak it. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments or his requirements or his requests. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commands are not burdensome. Wow. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, which is our connection to the Father. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the what? The Son of God. Those that follow who begot are maintaining a begotten or born again state of being. Waiting for his directions, his requests and commands to be released so that we and I are ready to obey them. They are not burdensome Amen. because of life in the third chamber. They are not burdensome at all. It is a place of sonship. It is a place of daughter and father. It is a relationship. It's not God. It's not Savior. It's not provider. It's not healer. It is father. Father. And that father cries out in you all the time. Father. Father. It's there all the time in you. That it's crying out all the time. If you are living in the third chamber, if you are living that life, if you are connected to the Father in that pure, glorious, intimate relationship, Father is always here. It's at the tip of your tongue. Amen. Yeah. In Romans 8, is reality. It is not imagination. Amen. It allows us to overcome all attempts, temptations, and influences of the worldly ways of evil. Because no matter what happens, you cry out, Father. Father. Romans 8. In verse 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, what? Work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew... He also predestined, predestined is a representation of set destiny, to be conformed to the image of his son. Wow. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. To be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed in the image of his son. In other words, his first requirement for me and you is to be called son of or daughter in relationship where he is known as father. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Wow. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The moment you slip away from Father, you have slipped away from destiny. 
father, son, father, daughter is the first priority to fulfilling destiny. Predestined to become a son or daughter, in other words, with the character of Christ, his relationship with the Father in the life in the third chamber. Again, predestined means to have destiny. Again, we were first called, we were invited to partake of spiritual battle because if you are called, everyone say, I'm called. I'm called. To be called means to be called to battle, amen? Amen. So what happens when you are called, you are invited to partake of the spiritual battle that's going on. Second, you are given a purpose. It's a purpose beyond earthly traditions. That purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. Thirdly, we are to fulfill a pre-planned destiny of infiltrating the world system as begotten sons and daughters of God Almighty with the anointing and the power of Christ to rescue and disciple those who have been taken captive and doing the will, they're doing the will of Satan. All right, I'll say it again. <laughs> Third, to fulfill a pre-planned destiny of infiltrating the world system. As begotten sons and daughters of God Almighty. With the anointing and the power of Christ. To rescue and disciple those who have been taken captive to do the will of Satan. Again, we cannot fulfill destiny without fulfilling the image or character of his son, Christ Jesus. As sons and daughters with relationship to the Father. You cannot fulfill, you will drift and slip away from destiny when you lose that relationship. There are people who've never fulfilled or got got to that place of relationship. They've known him as Lord, Savior, Jesus, healer, deliverer, provider, friend. Remember he called Judas friend too. But never father. There's never be, been a true relationship as a father. I can tell you in my first visitation from the Lord, that was the most revealing thing to me, more than anything, is that I met my father. I met my father, my true father. See, when you truly know him as father, then you know you as, as daughter or son. That's your identity. Amen. It's not what you've done, who, what position you hold, or what talents or abilities, or what job you have. That's not your identity. Your identity is son or daughter of the Father of all things. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. See, so when there's true worship, you're worshiping to press through to connect back to your Father. So that all of a sudden comes out of your mouth, Father, I know you're here, Dad. I know you're here. In verse 3, let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in where? Heavenly places in Christ. 
just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to the adoption as what? Sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace or his plan, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in a dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase, possession, to the praise of his glory. You and I were blessed with an inheritance through the relationship as offspring, with spiritual blessing in heavenly places or eternal realm in Christ, Christ in you and you in Christ. Connected to the Father and Jesus. Remember, that's why Jesus came and said, if you see me, you see the Father. Jesus' purpose and mission in life was to fulfill the will of the Father. Now we fulfill the will of the Father. That's why the word says we no longer acknowledge Jesus according to the flesh anymore. You know, I acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He paid the price for me. We, then he left his name as a weapon. He left his name as power to destroy the works of the devil because he paid the price. But he sits next to the Father. He makes intercession for me and you. But after my visitation from the Lord, my relationship was with the Father. Because if I have a relationship with the Father, I have a relationship with Jesus. Amen? Who do you think the Holy Spirit is? He's the Spirit of the Father. So we were sealed with the Spirit of the Father so that you and I could have such an intimate, loving relationship as Father, Daughter, Father, Son. Again, there are individuals that have never reached that place. They only know Jesus is everything else but Father. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, verse 14. Ephesians 2, verse 14. Let's speak it. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or hatred that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. He came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers, foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Wow. 
We have access to the Father by His Spirit as sons and daughters, where we are now the temple or the building of God on earth connected to the Father. And Galatians 4. Galatians 4. If the enemy can compromise you from the identity and state of being and cause you to drift from Father, he can cause you to drift. from destiny. Remember, the only way to fulfill destiny is to know him as Father. Father. See, because there's love there, isn't there? Now, there are, we have many people that have earthly fathers that were morons. Amen? But this has got nothing to do with an earthly father. An earthly father will always disappoint you but a heavenly father never will. And you know, see, when you truly have this relationship with the father, you know that no matter what's going on, you're not concerned. No matter how things look, no matter how things feel, no matter what, you know everything's going to work to the good. Amen. And you know that you will never lack. You will never lack. Listen, if you know God... As father, how could you lack anything? He holds it all. He holds everything. We will go through trials and tribulations. We will go through pains. We will go through all kinds of things. The enemy will do whatever he can to try and get, disconnect us and drift us from that state in relationship a father and daughter. All kinds of things will occur in our life. Look what happened to Jesus. I don't think any one of our lives can compare to what they did to him and what he allowed them to do to him. Because his love for the Father was his greatest love. And the love for the, from the Father for his creation was the gift of his Son who died for the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 4, verse 1. I now say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, even we, when we were children, were in, in bondage under the elements of the world, the traditions of men. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his what? His son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons and daughters now, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, or Daddy. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Wow. We are sons of God. As sons of God, daughters of God, we cry out, Abba, Father. We cry out, Father. We cry out, Daddy, because of that relationship. That is a third chamber, new life, living When I hear people talk about God, 
when I hear them talk about Jesus, when I hear them talk about all kinds of other things, I can sense what chamber they're living in. Amen. Is everybody okay? Sons of God, we cry out within. It is a constant cry out to the Father. Only by life in the third chamber. Again, we are the heir of the creator of all the universe, angels, mankind. And knowing, see, in this relationship, you know that dad has the last say what's going to happen to you. <laughs> He's got the last say. Again, slipping from the relationship with the father will slip from destiny. It is the first process of fulfilling destiny is to get that relationship. In Romans 8, verse 12. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of a bondage again to fear. Ah, see, in this chamber there is no fear. No fear. No worry. No concern. You got it. And you know that you're in the hands of the Father. And you know that no matter what's going on, it's going to work to the good. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. I mean, think about this. We are joint heirs of Christ. Everything that I have is his, and everything that he has is mine. That's called a joint error. Let's go a little further. Oh, yes. <laughs> Verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's me and you. Sons and daughters of God. So creation knows, is waiting for the individuals at this present time to come forth as sons and daughters in the relationship with the Father to rescue God's creation from corruption and destruction. We're seeing it happen right now. It is the sons and daughters of God that have raised up and have influenced the rest of the world to rise up Amen. against the powers of darkness. Verse 20. For the creation was subjected, I mean, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God for the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly but because of him who subjected it in hope remember hope is associated with destiny because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God 
For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. In other words, our groaning is crying out, Father. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? <laughs> but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Again, we are heirs and joint heirs. All creation awaits the begotten, those that are born of the Spirit, those that are living the life of the third chamber. They are third chamber dwellers to remove corruption and destruction as sons and daughters. It is a justice and righteousness movement to fulfill destiny of the eternal counsel of the Lord. And this will be done through your relationship with the Father. Just like Jesus had the relationship with the Father to fulfill his will, your, somebody get it, your destiny will be fulfilled by maintaining your relationship with the Father as a son and daughter. 2 Corinthians 6. You do not build relationship by works. Works does not build relationship Amen. with the Father. Right. Somebody get it. You can be the best worker. You can be the, have the best job. You can be whatever. It does not build a relationship with the Father. Only time in intimacy builds relationship with the Father. Not works. In verse 11, 2 Corinthians 6, 11. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has a temple of God with an idol? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk with them, I will be their God, and they will be my people if they do something. If they come out from among. If they come out from among. If they come out from among, what? Worldly. Worldly traditions. Religious traditions. If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, that's sanctification. And don't touch what is displeasing to God, which he calls unclean. He said, then I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Come out of your past and remove everyone and everything that has taken or distracted or distanced you from your life in the third chamber. You do not want to lose that relationship with the Father. Why? Because that's how you maintain to be a daughter and a son. Once it's disconnected as a relationship, father and son, destiny drifts. Does everybody get it? Purpose drifts. Calling drifts. Everything drifts. Until there is reconciliation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll start at verse 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And then 
one more scripture. Let's speak at verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God or your Father. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification, your separation from the world that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that it, each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Why? Because there's such a love relationship. This is not I want to love you. This is not I love you. It's I'm in love with you. You are my love. You are my first love, and nothing else is going to interfere with that. Anything that tries to steal my first love from him must be removed from my life. Does everybody understand? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. <clears throat> uh, let's start at verse 3 again. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, immora that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. When you see the word God there, you should look at it as Father. It should be father to you. In this relationship, again, there is no worry. There is no fear in this place. You know, no matter what's going on, it's going to work to the good. Why? Because you are fulfilling destiny by maintaining the relationship with dad. And you know he's got the last say no matter what. No matter what's going on, he's got the last say. Matthew 6. He is God. Hello? <laughs> There's nothing impossible. <laughs> so your dad is God Almighty. What the heck's the problem? I mean, what's the problem? The problem is we have an enemy that tries to disconnect it. But if you're living in the third chamber, you will never be disconnected. Matthew 6 and verse 25. Because in that place, can't touch this. Can't touch this. <laughs> They're going to mess with you. they got to mess with dad first. <laughs> Verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not what? Worry about your life. Woohoo! what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Now, I want you to understand that he's speaking about your new life in the third chamber. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So he's connecting this life in the third chamber with relationship with the Father. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit of his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Considering the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God, who so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your Father, <laughs> for your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He knows what you need. So you don't worry. It's common. But seek first the what? The kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. No worry, because he is Father, fulfilling, fulfiller, fulfillment, and everything else. That's why Jesus came and said, if you see me, you see the Father. Again, this is the first, most important process of fulfilling your destiny is maintaining a father-daughter, father-son relationship. When it begins to drift or disconnected, so does everything else. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and grateful for your word and your message and your prophetic release. And I'm asking, Dad, that you'd reconnect your people in every area. For there are many who have been disconnected from their father. And we ask, Lord, out of your mercies and grace, that you'd reveal yourself more and more to your people as daddy, as friend, as hope, and as destiny. For you are the only fulfiller. Restore us all, Lord, to our first love. You. And bring your glory, your kingdom, and your power in us and through us that we may express you in everything we do and bring glory to the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of the Father.